JMU speeding up. I think the big difference is definitely JMU figured out what Edouard Montpetit was doing in that game number one, and it just looks a little bit more coordinated. I'm not sure if the speed is a big difference, but the coordination is definitely there. As whenever Edouard Montpetit, like, like you said, gets on offense, it's definitely quality, and they can definitely put the pressure on, but it's just keeping that going has been their real downfall. So a chance at the start, a couple of chances actually again. JMU starting off game number three with more early pressure against the Lynx, but can they find a quality goal scoring opportunity? That touch might be it, and Kromsky pulls one away off the back wall. Missed the second touch, however, but Jake Kraft as well hands it away to the Lynx in the corner, and Shylon's way late to that ball. Kromsky and Hero Darkness in a tough spot, but again, Kromsky's had to make a tough couple of big saves, and he's done it well again here. And we're seeing a lot of this play happen from the midfield line, the third man in the James Madison rotation, and Edouard and Petit keep leaving their goal wide open, but they're lucking out right now. Nobody from the Dukes are actually taking shots, so there's no one there, or they're not getting in trouble on the save. So for Edouard and Petit, they've got to stay organized on defense because the net has been left open quite a few times. They just lucked out with no shots coming through. But they are controlling the midfield boost currently, and they are able to push JMU back a little bit here. They will give a little ground. Kromsky needs a touch to space. Jaycraft is right there for it and almost stealing it right back. Kromsky finally not able to get his mitts on a tough challenge. Jaycraft through one, slow to the second, and it's pretty much free, but he took it away. Mr. Slothman was going to try and blast that one to the near post. Transfer back the other way. Back wall, hero darkness denied by Mr. Slothman. The Dukes hold firm, but it was a close call. And that's a great play from the Lynx. That transition so quick to catch out that JMU defense. They only had to beat one guy, but they couldn't put the shot on target. Much better on offense. Hero darkness just missed a quality goal scoring opportunity. Siege break through the other way. Jaycraft only has 12 in the tank he's he literally just drove forward to make hero darkness think he had him beat if he jumped and it bought extra time that is a heads up play that's the mind game that you play especially when you know a defender is struggling to get a read on the ball and the play in general those little mind games can buy you space and time but has it paid off here for the dukes as they just lost possession in the midfield shylon stealing one away the pass to the middle though Left a bit to be desired, and Hero Darkness trying to keep the pressure going. Shylon figuring out if he wants to. He's decided late, though. And Jaycraft, a sloth man, kicked up off the wall. Kromsky, again, tough challenge. And Siege will try and keep things going for the Dukes, and stolen away in the midfield by Hero Darkness. Those passing plays that we're seeing coming out from J or JMU really spread out the defense, especially towards the midfield line uh, on the Lynx side. They're really struggling with these balls either going over their head or they're too spread Whoa. out. That one's going to go right under it. The reactions from the death say it all. Siege comes flying through to put JMU on the board. Yeah, Hero Darkness missed the first one, but <laughs> he did it backwards. He did it backwards <laughs> is right. Siege came in and said, good on me. I want to see some urgency out of Siege game here. They're two minutes away from elimination in this overall tournament. They got to get some things going on offense at the very least tie this up and get in overtime, can they do it? That's the question. Well, they've done a nice job getting pressure. They've got over onto the blue side of the field enough times. It's really just figuring out how to dig that ball out of the corner. And it's really come back to bite them here in game three. And they got to keep up with that speed of JMU. You see the passing plays again, always looking for each other in the midfield. And even if the pass doesn't even connect with the intended target, it makes a defender from Edouard Montpetit go for the ball and spread them out. Siege with some space to work with. Pass to the side and met by Hero Darkness. Mr. Slothman denied by Shylon in the corner and a dribble opportunity doesn't take it. Tips it towards the midfield line and the Dukes regain possession. Shylon jumped a little early. It's gonna cost so much of his boost actually. And this could come back to haunt him here as he's only in the net with 20. He's got just enough, but the pressure again mounting for JMU here. And that is just going to slide in. Hero Darkness, oh my, oh my uh. goodness. Kromsky got so fortunate he drives an Octane. If that's a Dominus or a Batmobile, it's in the net. And that would have been one of the most unlucky goals I've ever seen. But JMU is still pressing. You're trying to drop down the pass here is Jaycraft. But that third man going back, Siege, still keeping the pressure on now with 30 seconds left. This is a game that is not out of the hands of Edouard Montpetit still. They can Ooh. still come back. They finally transfer onto offense. Soft lift from Hero Darkness in the midfield. There's Shillion, and he's oh. got the double tap off the back 
wall. Edouard Montpetit not quite done. Don't Cross. count CGM out yet. 23 seconds left. They find the opportunity. Oh. Shailen off the post. <laughs> Spooky enough. We might have overtime on our hands. What a fortunate bounce to have it come <laughs> off the inside of the post and across the net. If that was just an inch to the left, it would have gone off the back wall straight back out. So JMU going to have to battle a bit more. They might have got him off the kickoff again. And Kromsky, once more, a solid defensive effort to keep the net clear. Final five, J-Craft steals one away. He's got the boost to make him really think how to do it. Oh. Wants the flip reset, and that is not going to be able to get into the top of the net. JMU have to find their chances in OT. I think that that opportunity was pretty great right there, having that flip reset, but again, not able to connect and execute on it. A lot of space given up from Iwama Petit. Jay Madison have taking advantage with passing or the solo plays that we just saw. Off the side from Hero Darkness for Shylon and Kromsky. Oh! One, two, tap. We're going to game four. A lovely one, two transition goal for the Lynx. And they finally put something on target here moving downfield. We talk about the pressure that we wanted from Lynx, and they just never really seem to have 